This is the Big 3 News lead story of the day. Well, hi, Rusty Ray. Good to have you with us on the broadcast tonight. We're talking, we're talking a little bit about animal intelligence. We're talking about the dog Chaser. Yes. What do you think about the Chaser? Border Collie. Border Collie. You've had a little experience with Border Collies, haven't you? Yes, we have. Unfortunately, a few weeks ago, we had to have our Border Collie put down. She had developed nasal cancer and it had uh, it's quite an aggressive cancer. That's got to be a traumatic experience on the family because a dog's just like one of the family, isn't it? Yes, it is. And she was eight and a half years old. She was my daughter's dog. She was shown in 4-H. And um, it's hard to lose any pet, especially one that you uh, worked a lot with. And uh, But we knew, you know, that we would have to make that decision. And when the time came, so. And, and this isn't the first dog you've put down either. You had a, a previous experience with a uh, dachshund, didn't you? Yes. Um, well, many dogs over the years, different different breeds, some mixed breeds, um, mainly dachshunds, but we've had labs and sharpays and collies and just an array of dogs throughout the years. Well, Cindy, I, I don't want to keep you too long because it's a holiday. It's New Year's. By the way, Happy New Year's to you and your family. I appreciate you joining us tonight. No problem. T tell our viewers here, we're going to ask you some questions here about this story, but tell our viewers a little bit about your background so they get a sense of, of your love of animals and, and then how you can discuss this story about animal intelligence with us. Well, I've... I've always had animals and mostly dogs. Um, I became involved with 4-H um, when my daughter became 4-H age and she joined a club and started to um, training one of our dogs and eventually became a 4-H advisor myself and went through dog training uh, privately and um, many years later we are still involved and volunteers for the high state fair dog shows and help put those on and mostly I'm a, a steward for those shows at the ringside and and uh, just help the youth and training and responsibility and health and, and an array of, of uh, aspects to the animal and how to take care of it. And you're a dog breeder. I mean, you're a dog breeder. You're a dog trainer. You've bred dachshunds. Yes, bred dachshunds for many years. Um, they're all retired now. They're all old and and have retired. And I've chosen not to continue breeding. I, I just feel there's a lot of dogs out there in the shelters, mm -hmm. and especially with the uh, economy, the last few years, a lot of people have had to give up their pets. And and I just don't want to add more population when there's adoptable animals needing homes. So, so what kind of issues have you dealt with related to animals? Um, some aggression, um, stubborn, different breeds are bred for certain purposes and so there's different techniques to training certain breeds. You know, just like the Border Collie, if you if you watch Chaser, how he rewarded her each time with a ball that he called Blue. Um, border Collies are motivated with a ball, Frisbee, things like that, more so than uh, treat motivated. Uh, for instance, a dachshund is highly motivated by food, so you can train very easily with treats. Um, you can train a Border Collie very easy uh, with toys as a reward. And they were very specific about their method of training Chaser, this Border Collie, weren't they? They they focused specifically on one object, let the dog learn that object, and then moved on to the next one, didn't they? Yes, and, and it's very easy if you watch that, if you've had any kind of training um, or worked with animals to know that um, dogs learn by repetition. So if you, when you're teaching commands, say, to sit or to down, you're using one word and you're usually 
training that one command until the dog has that command, and then you're moving on to the next command. So by allowing Chaser to learn one object at a time and to get that down, she's able then to, to move on to the next one and the next one and the next one. And um, Border Collies are rated number one smartest dog, according to AKC. Um, they're highly intelligent dogs. They're highly motivated, and they... They have such a drive to, to work and to please that they're very trainable. Which breed of dogs do you find to be the most loyal? Oh, I don't have any certain uh, breed. I think any any canine, whether it's purebred or, or mixed, is loyal. I think, um, you know, they they want to please. Their, their, their nature is to please, and... And uh, they're a companion animal, and even a dog. If you've if you've watched any kind of uh, uh, shows on TV uh, where animals are abused and stuff, and they can come out of that and, and still are as loyal as can be. That always amazes me with uh, a, a a dog, especially how uh, they can be treated pretty badly and still just come back for love and, and companionship. Um, well, apparently, unfortunately with go ahead, go ahead. Unfortunately with border collies they are also rated the probably the highest in shelters, the number one dogs in shelters and, and pounds. And that goes back to an individual not doing the research on a specific breed before purchasing or adopting, and um, they, they, their drive to work is so deeply embedded into them that if you don't keep this dog stimulated and exercise and w working, meaning you, you could work a dog by throwing a ball or a frisbee or teaching it something, um, they can come quite neurotic and, and have strange behavior. And kind of like you know, kind of like some of our kind of like some of our blog TV trolls, they get neurotic and they have strange behavior too, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know, if you if you seen that border collie like that, you would probably think, well, how could they be the smartest dog if it's acting like this? Well, it's because it's lacking stimulation that it, it, it so desires, and uh, unfortunately, people just don't do the research on breeds before they go out. They just buy a cute puppy, and ultimately the dog suffers for that. You know, dogs were all bred for a specific thing, and, you know, it's still there, you know, somewhere deep down inside of them. It's still there, especially, you know, ones like that, the herding dog, the, you know, the dog that was bred to really work, work daily. You know, it wasn't a lap dog. Cindy, what's so one of the, what's one of the most horrific experiences you've ever had training or raising animals, particularly dogs? Oh, have you, well, have, have I you ever been bitten? Have you, ever, most, have you ever had a bad wound from a dog? I have been bitten, um, not badly. Um, if you know anything about working with animals. You know, especially a dog, they can feel everything, you know, right down the arm into the leash, and they know. If you're afraid, they know. They take advantage of that. Um, same way with being on the back of a horse. If a horse senses you're afraid of them, they're going to take advantage of that. Um, they're, you know, they're in, in, in what we teach, we also teach behavior and how to read behavior in animals. So if it's stressed or it's aggressive or it's submissive, you know, there's certain ways an animal will look and act, you know, if they are. And uh, kids are taught to recognize that. But um, I don't know. You know, it's always hard when, when you lose a pet suddenly, you know, but... Um, I think one of the hardest things was uh, watching one of my, my first breeding um, 
dachshund um, became very ill, and over a 10-day period, she died, and um, several trips to the vet and back and forth, and things weren't working, and what it ended up being was um, uh, wood tick paralysis, and it, it can be prevented if you know what it is and caught in time, but unfortunately, I did not know where the vet was did not know that that's what it was, and uh, so that's kind of a sad thing to watch that happen because it's it's uh, slow but fast, and uh, you don't understand it mimics a, a back problem, and, and so you're treating it for something that it's completely different. Well, Cindy, you're doing an so, honorable you're doing an honorable thing by participating in 4-H. 4-H is an excellent program to get young people involved, and a lot of people yes, here in the room. Yes, it teaches responsibility of ownership. A lot of times these, these kids will grow up to be the ones who will sedate and neuter their animals, vaccinate, buy their local dog license, and do the right thing by an animal. And, uh, and, and a lot of times they're the ones that will go out and adopt that animal at your shelter or at your pound. Uh, a lot of times you think you want a full-blooded dog and you've got to find a breeder. Trust me, if you do a little bit of research, you can find but there are many, many full-bred dogs waiting to be adopted. Um, it's just a matter of looking, and at your local local dog pound, it's usually a matter of twenty dollars to adopt a dog. So start there first, you know, give a dog a chance. All right, Cindy, great to have you on the show tonight. Tell the family we said Happy New Year at the Ponderosa, and thanks for joining us on Big Three News. Thank you, Rusty Ray. All right, Happy New Year. Politics, faith, and love. You're watching Big Three News, where we cover the stories that matter the most.